flagship species of the Cedarberg Mountains. And small wonder, it is also the, the tallest tree in the Feinbos region. And uh, they can grow uh, anything up to 20 meters. And in prior history, this plant was used a lot. Because the cedar tree is a very valuable uh, to the uh, early colonists that built uh, many, many uh, fence poles. The telephone lines were built by cedar wood. And cedar wood are durable and there are no insects that will come eat them. But that brings me to the, the, the other aspect. But cedar tree are thus famous the tallest tree. And they only occur in the Cedarburg Mountains. So it's very pro appropriate that the Cedarburg was named the Cedarburg. But they occur uh, uh, as massive trees on rock blocks uh, above a thousand meters. So they occur in massive rocks. And the reason is, unlike uh, uh, the mountain cedar that can re-sprout after a fire, the cedar tree does not re-sprout. It, after a fire, the old tree will get burnt. And that's why the only survivors of them are in the big, uh, massive rock blocks. And they, they, are, they belong to the gymnosperms. In other words, the cone-bearing plant. Or uh, another name for them are the spermatophytes. But these are uh, uh, or seed plants. But they, uh, so they're one of the, they, uh, the, the cedar tree or the gymnosperms I've got various groups, they're all relics from the past. Uh, uh, but coming back to the cedar tree, they've also got seed which are serotonous. In other words, a little round hard fruits that will only open after a fire. And once a, a fire occurs, the seed will open. And the seeds are winged, they're little black seeds. And the seed, uh, the wind disperses the seed. And wherever it will blown, be blown into a little rock crevice, it will germinate. If it germinates in areas where there are famous around it uh, uh, in the same vicinity and the fire comes across it will be killed right away but when it uh, germinates in a rock block then it will survive and in the cedarburg itself if one go there many of the old trees are scorched by fire but however many of the, the bigger ones survive but unfortunately in the past because it's such a valuable tree they were they were over exploited and today cedar trees are protected if one looks at the leaves of the cedar trees as well, they are small, very flammable, but, but small resinous and well adapted to this very summer dry climate. And uh, uh, when the seedlings germinate, they are small, they usually have a, a typical uh, pyramidal shape. But as they mature, as, the, uh, as in this picture one can see uh, behind me, they get more a, uh, a rounded or spreading crown. But the young trees are all uh, 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 have got this conical shape typical of so many coniferous plants and its closest relatives uh, uh, there's only three cedar trees occurring in South Africa and the other two are closely related the mountain cedar which occurs right up to the Drakensberg that's a re-sprouter in other words after it also occurs in Feinbos after a fire that can simply re-sprout and then the, the, the rarest of the lot which is just as rare as, as the Clan William cedar are the Willowmo cedar with Antonia Schwarzi and that occurs also in another part of the, the Cape uh, uh, floristic region, and that's the Bavianske part, and also on, on big uh, rock blocks. So the two are very similar, and in that part, they were also similarly used by the old colonists. Uh, they were also used for all sorts of household implements and uh, 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 building uh, of houses, for instance.